there everyone we're now on our next video in science technology and society and in this module in this chapter in this next batch of videos shall we say in our playlist we're going to talk about the nano world okay so what is this nano world that we're talking here so it talks about a, a very small world okay uh, existing in a, with us only that it's it can only be seen by certain uh, microscopes okay in which we cannot see using the naked eye so the global market leader for tips for um the scanning probe microscope it started with the scanning probe microscope and with the atomic force microscope in which we're going to discuss a little bit um after this and we're going to talk about um in this video the spheres of influence of nanotechnology so overall we're going to talk about these things um by the end of this batch of videos so first up, um, for the purposes of this video, as, as much as this uh, as this first video is concerned, we're going to talk about the origins first. Okay, the origins of the nano world. Okay, so we're still in our science, technology, and society playlist. So let's go back to the scanning probe microscope. Okay, um, short for SPM. So okay, so this is taken from this website here. So this is um how the scanning probe microscope works. So we have a laser here, a uh, photodiode, and um, such as detectors and feedback electronics, and how and this is where the image is being being stored into the into the microscope itself. So we we actually this is just a microscopy. We use what we call a scanning tunneling micro, microscope in doing such. So this is a branch of microscopy, okay, that forms images on surfaces using a physical probe that scans the specimen itself. Okay, so this was first founded in way back 1981, 1982, with the invention of the, like I said, scanning tunneling microscope. This is an instrument for imaging surfaces at a very atomic level. So that is in a very, very small level, okay, which is not anymore or cannot be anymore seen by the naked eye. Okay, so this is the scanning probe microscopy. We're going to talk about the AFM next. That's the atomic force microscopy. We have here the diagram that that explains how it works. Still, it still uses some laser. That's why it's one type of a scanning probe microscope or an SPM with demonstrated resolution on the order of fractions okay, on a nanometer. This is more than 1,000 times better than an optical diffraction limit. So the information is gathered by feeling okay, or touching the surface with a mechanical probe. So this is our mechanical probe here. So you are touching it. Okay, and this is since this is our sample. Okay, so we're touching or feeling the the um, the surface okay, with this sun mechanical probe. And then um, again, this is one type of the scanning probe microscopy. So... Next is we're going to deal with the origins of the nanoscience as we will this, this as this um chapter is going to focus on so the origin of nanoscience first in 1959 it was discussed by the renowned of course our um, ever famous scientist or physicist Richard Feynman in his talk there's plenty of room at the bottom in which he described the possibility of synthesis via direct manipulation of atoms. Okay, again, direct manipulation of atoms. This was again way back um, in 1959. So in 1960, Egyptian engineer Mohammed Atala and Korean engineer Dawon Kang, sorry if I mispronounced those, at Bell Labs fabricated the first MOSFET or MS, MOS rather, MOSFET metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor so with a gate oxide thickness of 100 nanometers along with a gate length of 20 okay micrometers so that's that's a that's a step further in 1962 furthermore atala and kang fabricated a nanolayer based metal semiconductor junction we call that the ms junction okay transistor that used gold okay thin films with a thickness of 10 um, nanometers so that's um, the next improvement in in science technology as you can see um, these years only differ by one or two but you can see the the improvements um, um, is getting better and better as we all know science is not static it's constantly changing and changing so furthermore let's discuss um, the next part is the term nanotechnology when is this used this was first used in 1974 by Norio Taniguchi. 
okay and go back um after how many six um after what 12 years after that um in 1968 around 12 years k eric drexler used the term nanotechnology okay now this time without the, the dash in his book engines of creation the coming era of nanotechnology so from the title of the book he used the term nanotechnology as it is which proposed the idea of of a nanoscale okay assembler a nanoscale assembler which would be able to build a copy of itself and other items of arbitrary complexity with atomic control so in 1980 um the emergence of nanotechnology as a field okay occurred through convergence of dexler dexler's theoretical and public work so it's because of dexter that um nanotechnology is now considered as another discipline another field in 1986 drexler co-founded the foresight institute to help increase public awareness and understanding of nanotechnology concepts and the implications of it okay uh, again this is way back 1986 this is just the origins you, one can imagine um what other uses of nanotechnology has been is now okay given that it's now in 2021 so the uses of nanotechnology is of course um a very big big leap okay as what it started um way back in 1986 okay so that's it for the video for this video for now um we're going to talk more about the nanoscience and technology in the next video and hopefully you will you'll be with me okay as the video goes along and this will be again our um, maybe one of our last chapters in in science technology and society so i um i hope you'll, you'll be with me until the last part okay so thank you very much for watching i hope that you would like and also subscribe okay see ya